Hello, and welcome to a quick video about how to use data loaders update feature. Um, for today's video, we have a uh, quick example of how this might be a use case of how you'd use this, but I always like to start off with the disclaimer of when you're first learning how to use data loader, if you're a beginner, if you're very advanced in the tool, I always suggest always start in a sandbox because when you do make mass data updates using data loader, you run the risk of if something's um, unaccounted for potentially, and you do run this in production the very first time, uh, that would definitely be a, a big problem for, for you and your team. So always start with a data loader uh, in a sandbox first and then go to production once everything looks okay. So let's look at my instance right here. And this is a situation here where in my demo environment, I have the category field here has all these cases with login. I, I made a list for you just showing that um, where the category is login. Um, and these need to be updated to the category value of uh, accounts is what the name it should be. So the very first thing I did is I built a report here with two fields in this report and we have case ID and category. Case ID, if you're not familiar with, is actually how Salesforce views cases uh, behind the scenes. So for an example, if we have a case named example number one um, with the uh, Salesforce case ID number is one, two, three, four, Salesforce doesn't look at that. It looks at this ID right here behind the scenes. And the category field right here is um, going to be what we're, what we're changing. Um, also too, in the case ID, it's almost like the address of telling Salesforce, okay, this case ID right here, we're gonna update this category value right here. And this is a pick list field as well. So um, for all intents and purposes, I would say it's best practice to always know the exact naming and spelling of the field right here as well. So for filters right here, I have show me all of my cases in my demo environment with the category equal to login because that's what we want to change. And when we run this case, uh, this this um, report with cases in it, it'll show us that criteria and we'll need to save this report so we can export it into a CSV file. Um, we only have 69 cases right here, but if we click the little drop down arrow right here and then we say export, we'll need to click on details only and then change the formatting to a CSV file. And the reason why it's CSV is because um, this is the formatting that Data Loader uses. So we would just click export from here. I've actually already done that in uh, prior to this video starting. So I opened up my Excel document right here, my CSV file, and then I have all of these category fields and I wanna change this now to the accounts value. So we'll click that and we'll put that as the value for all of them. And now we'll save. And when we save here, if you get a error message like this, it's not an error message at all. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just saying that, hey, this is in an Excel format. Is this really what you want to continue with? And we want to say yes. So if we bring up data loader here, we can click update. And if you need to log in right here, this is where it would show you that. And this is going to be associated with the case object. And then we need to browse for our CSV file, which is on my desktop. We'll click open there and then we'll click next. You'll see a um, uh, message right here saying you're gonna update the following 68 records. We'll click okay. And this field right here, this part of the data loader steps, it talks about, hey, you have these fields in your CSV file. What do those map out to in Salesforce? So if we click create or edit a map, we can click on the auto match fields to columns. And if for any reason, at any point, you do have something where it's not necessarily updating correctly, like there's not a, um, it's not mapping automatically, you can just drag and drop those fields. We can click OK, click Next. And this is saying, where should the successes and error messages go? So if everything's successful, where should it go? Where should errors go? And the errors portion, I'd say, is pretty valuable because you can find out a little more details. If something fails, why did it fail? And then we can click on Finish right here. You'll see this warning right here saying um, you're about to do this and that's that's fine. We want to do this and you'll have a progress screen right here. And mine was real quick because I only have 68 records and uh, we can go ahead and click OK. So let's check back at our Salesforce instance here. If we remember here, these all these category fields all used to say login. Let's refresh here. And now we only have that one, which we can definitely look into here. But um, I had an example case right here. And now we can see the category field is now listed as accounts. So I hope this was helpful and is successful in getting you to um, transition successfully over to, to Salesforce.